Welcome to Historical History. My name is Nam, and I'm going to be the leading anchor. Today's topic is going to be the Italian Union. Now, Italy unified. Italian unification, also known as Il Risorgimento, or the Resurgence, was the political and social movement that governed different states of the Italian peninsula into a single nation known as Italy in the 19th century. The starting point of the Italian unification was around 1815 with the Congress of Vienna and at the end of the Napoleonic rule. It ended in 1871 with the Franco prussian War. France introduced the reform into the, its Italian states at the Napoleonic period. After, uh, after states gained back their former rulers, they provided an impetus to the movement of Italian Union. Union. Young Italy was a secret group that advocated Italy. There was also secret leaders such as Cam Camillo Cavour, who was founded in the journal too, Risorgimento, uh, in 1847, Giuseppe Garibaldi and Giuseppe Mazzini, gathered lib liberal reforms and it uni united Italy. However, the revolution of 1848 was a failure. Leadership was then passed on to Cavour and Piedmont, forming an alliance with the France against Austria in 1859. The unification of Mosi Italy in 1861, followed by the annexation of Venetia in 1866 and Papal Rome in 1870, marked the end of the Risorgimento. To understand the Italian unification more, you need to know the following. Giuseppe Mazzini was an Italian politician, journalist, and activist for unification of Italy. He was born on 22nd of June 1805, and he died on March 1872. He had the nickname of Soul of Italy since his effort helped bring out the most of Italian independence and unified Italy. He also helped define the modern European movement for popular democracy and republican state on April 7, 1848. Mazzini helped travel to, Mar uh, to Milan, who was one of the highest main rebellion groups inside of Italy. With the hope changing their minds, he ended up in Milan. The first Italian war of independence started by Piedmontese King Charles Albert to increase the favorable circumstances in Milan, but ended in a failure. Mazzini also went to Rome on February 9, 1849 because the Republic has been declared. He was appointed to triumvir of the new Republican March 29th. Soon he became the true leader of the government. And by showing good administrative capabilities in social reform, he has reformed most of Italy. That is until people of it, in Italy out of Italy tried to assassinate him. Without further choice, he fled to Switzerland. Mazzini's desire to unify Italy was all caused by his small mistake made in him. His actions of revolutionary movement have caused him and his companions to go to prison. While in prison, he started to think of ideas to rebel against Italy again and unify them. He believed that Italy can and therefore must be unified. He wanted, he wanted to create a free, independent and republican nation with Rome as the capital. When he was released, he went to Marseille, where he organized a new political society called La Jovan, Italia. He started small and slowly ended up big, seeking for the unification of Italy. States of Italy before Italy became a whole country, it was divided into many sections called States of Italy, similar to the states in America. We have Piedmont, Parma, Lombardy, Modena, Venetia, Papal Legations, Romanza, Papal States, Tuscany, Naples, Sicily, Sardinia, and Corsica. Risorgimento stands for Resurrection, Revival, Resurgence, Renewal, and so on. It was the idea of recreating Italy, or returning of the former nations. July Revolution In July 1830, the Bourbon King of France, Charles X, was overthrown in favor of the Orleanist Louis Philip. The event encouraged unrest in Belgium, Germany, and Poland. At first, it had no direct effect in unification of Italy, but later on, it slowly took its form and was regarded as a helping hand in unifying Italy. 
Pius XI was the last pope to rule the sovereign of Papal State, which fell completely into the Italian Nationalist Army by 1870 and were incorporated into the Kingdom of Italy. Giuseppe Garibaldi was one of the leading figures of Risorgimento. He was born in Nice and used to be a sailor. He joined Young Italy in 1833 and was involved in the uprising in 1834. When he was in great danger, he escaped to South Africa, where he led the Guerrilla groups. Later on, these groups became the basis of the Italian legion that came to being in 1843. Count Camillo di Cavour was one of the three great leaders of the process of Italian unification. He traveled to France and, and Britain, where he gained many insights on improving Piedmont's modernization. He was a very well-known and strong political leader with huge nationalist belief and idea. Victor Emmanuel was the last king of Piedmont and the first king of Italy, due to the reason of Piedmont was later handed to France as a truce deal and nowadays it's called Nice. He is very blunt and lecherous. He threatened to abolish the 1849 constitution, but he didn't dare. Victor Emmanuel was a very convincing person who had many ways to speak around people. Because of his speech, he became one of the most important men of Giuseppe Garibaldi. Napoleon III was a very helpful figure for the Italian unification. In 1859, he fended off the Austrians who were after Italy and help unify Italy more. In exchange, he wanted the two states of Italy to be handed to France. One of them is Piedmont, which became Nice, and the other is Savoy. After that, he still helped Italy out in many aspects. It has already been a while, and I think you gained some insights on the Italian unification. We have discussed people, events, and ideas. Now what about my opinion? <laughs> Italy was unified in 1861, now the question is why was it unified? A simple answer would be because there, will be more, and there was more forces supporting it than against the unification. There are many events that occurred throughout the time supporting the unification and they will be mentioned later. However, I want to reiterate the question why was it unified? Why did, why did the Italians want to unify Italy? Was it common language? How about the same culture and religion? That's a very difficult question that maybe the people themselves didn't know the answer for. I want to ask you, why do you like to eat what you like? Why do you have an opinion on what is good and bad? It's all just a belief on what you believe in. They, uh, they did it because they believed that they could create a better Italy if they did. They believed that the nation can become more powerful and there won't be much differentiation anymore. They followed what they believed is right and followed it accordingly. Without stopping to think that what they were doing is right or not, of course, that is just a view on being overall. As of the events that caused the unification of Italy, the first several de development that were brought between 1855 to 1861 are the most important. It started off with Napoleon III and Cavour who met in secret in July 1858 in Prombe to plot, uh, to plot a war against Austria. The meeting was really important to the extent that Cavour was forced to travel with a fake passport. However, the documentation was sent to Victor Emmanuel. They tried to first build a political relationship by offering their children to show the bond between nations, a cousin and a daughter. Later on, it was a planning of war started. Cavour plotted, Napoleon led, Garibaldi helped, the, helped, and Emmanuel dealt with politics. The second push was given when the Third War of Italian Independence lasted for two months. The railway age also embarked around the time when many French were brought into the war zone by train. 40,000 troops were killed during the two major battles, Magenta and Soferino. A month later, French and Piedmont troops defeated Austrians at Solferino, weakening their affection with Italy. Truces were started to be offered to Italy and land was slowly gained to the extent Italian ter territory. Also, to lead the unification. Ironically, thanks to the declaration of war from Austria before the truce, Nationalists were sparked within the central Italy and they started to revolt 
to unify Italy. All the events that occurred so far were indirect influences of Italian, Italy's unification. The Rio deal only started when Garibaldi started to really contribute to the Italian unification of Italy. It embarked when Garibaldi controlled the southern Italy to revolute against Sicilians. He sojourned in Piedmont to strengthen the army and attack Nice. Naples started to fall to Garibaldi and it was a decision on Rome or death. Garibaldi lost the troops soon after, but the unification continued without stopping until nearly all states of Italy fell into unification. Garibaldi handed his conquest to Victor Emmanuel to continue and he finished it in, by 1861, leaving only two more Italian states ununified. As you can see, the start was a total coincidence. Like the coincidence of Newton's law, there are small parts for change but slowly developed into a huge fire. That is when the peoples took the, that fire and spread it across Italy. Now, back to the question of what was my opinion? Well, my opinion is the Italian unification was a total coincidence at first, but then Garibaldi started to really take that coincidence and spread it around Italy to unify Italy and to go with his beliefs. Well, that was it for the Italian unification and thank you for joining me in historical history. If you're still wondering on what you have learned or you're still hesitating on the information about the Italian unification, you can contact me or you can check out the citations I have used for my research. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.